there. Thank you for coming to my workshop. Today's workshop is Living in Color, and it's all about healing with color, uh, making yourself feel better, coloring your world, all these things with color. I'm going to teach you unbelievably fast techniques that anyone can do to create things like this and this and these. All of these colors, lots of colors. And I'm going to teach you some little tips and tricks about using embossing clay, embossing folders, embossing tools. And let's see, what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about mediums, about gloss and, and adhesive. I'm going to try to squeeze every single thing I can out of this workshop. Thank you for being here. And let's get started. For this project, you only need a couple of things. A gloss gloss. And what it is is it's embossing. It's in this applicator. And it's so easy to use. The fun thing about this is you can be direct. You can stamp just a certain part of the rubber stamp without worrying about, you know, you're embossing all over the place. I love these. I live by these. The next thing you need is some embossing powder. You might have different rubber stamps or you might, you know, choose something different to do your project just as you would with the paper, which I'm using a sky background for this card. You can actually use a piece of white paper and or blue paper, I should say, and make your clouds. Use some white gesso or some white acrylic and, and make your clouds or print one out, cut it out, and use it as a template. Um, so I'm going to use some paper that's already clouded, which I found at my local craft store. Okay. And then, of course, you need a heat gun uh, because the heat gun is what's going to get us hopping. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start by stamping my beautiful blackbird, but, you know, nothing is dark with me. So I am going to do this guy in different colors. So what I'm doing right now is just getting him covered with my boss gloss. Okay, now I'm going to stamp him. I want him right there. And you want to give a good push. Make sure your impression's down, unless you're using the mat, uh, you know, or a towel back or something, so you can get a good impression. No need to invest a lot of money. Fold up a towel. It usually works. Okay, so I want this guy to be different colors, so I'm going to start by sprinkling. Now, normally, I would brush off any excess, but because... I uh, don't plan on storing it because I'm mixing colors. It doesn't matter. So, And I think I want to put just a little bit of red up there. Oh, well, that's a lot of red, but, oh, I have the fan on. <laughs> okay. You know how I do it. So, anyway, I got the guy covered. I have to keep the fan on because, so if I was doing this at a different angle, it wouldn't be floating all over the place. So don't worry about that. Mine is because the fan is on, it's a warm day, and I'm in the studio, so I definitely don't want to be in here closed in, you know, blowing fumes or whatever around, powders and all that. So I've covered my bird. Not to worry. He's going to be an interesting, colorful bird. And then I'm just going to take my paper, tap the excess. Look at that. Look at that. And I think I will actually save this powder to do another bird. Okay, let me tell you about my trusty little storage. <laughs> I got this uh, container from my local restaurant store. You know, it comes in a long tube of them. I'm pretty sure it was only like two bucks and something. And then they have lids that go with them as well. And it's a great way to store mixed powder or paints or something and uh, that you don't want to mix back in, but you might use again. So there you have that. Now for the fun. This is my trusty heat gun. Now I'm a tool girl, 
So this is not what you're going to get in the craft store. I actually got this at like my local Home Depot. But this, uh, they do make um, craft heat guns, and uh, they're usually around about 20 bucks, you know, unless you get one of those good coupons. Anyway, so I'm going to heat this up, and you don't want to heat it long. You can tell it's done when it starts shining. And I usually like to use uh, movement to keep from burning. I also like to keep it at a distance. So, and this paper is curling because it is textured paper. There's a lot of glitter on it you might not be able to see. So I keep this moving so I don't put too much emphasis on one spot and burn it up. Once it's all shined up, it's a done deal. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful image? Can you see that? texture. Okay, so now we've heated up our bird. We are going to go on to step two. Now for step two, I'm going to go over the bird. Yes, I did say over him. I'm going to stamp this cage over my bird. Uh, I want it obviously to look like he's in a cage. So once again, I'm going to Get it good, and and sometimes if your stamps have uh, excess rubber around the edges, sometimes if you press too hard, you can get the uh, image of whatever's on the edge on your picture, and sometimes that's not a good thing. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Like for me, I do a lot of distress work, so it doesn't really matter. Now, you might notice that on the uh, cage, let me get this guy close up here for you. You might notice that there is uh, some embossing ink on the inside. So, what I do about that is I would take a Q tip and wipe in between. Look at that beautiful caged bird. Now, I'm going to heat it up again. Let's get our cage nice and textured and start higher up. Work your way down. And remember, move it around. If you make mistakes, remember, there actually are no mistakes. Now, I'm going to take a minute to cut him out so we can get on to the next phase. What do you think? Isn't he great? So now I'm going to make a window for him to sit in. Okay, before I go on, um, I have here my background paper, but before I tell you about that, I'm going to tell you about the stamp. You can find decorative stamps in most craft stores, most major craft stores, and even smaller ones. This is just one I particularly like, so I'm going to use this one as a valance, basically. Um, but you can find anything that you think is pretty that you can make yourself a window with. Okay, and the next thing I want to show you is I uh, showed you the boss gloss. Let me get that in there. But this is a big embossy, and this is an embossing pad that you simply just push your stamp down onto, and this is the big one. <laughs> so for this big stamp, that's what I'm going to use. Now the other thing I need to do is I need to uh, get some ink onto there, which I can actually do with this one. So that's what I'm doing. Just to make it a little more moist. I don't use it that often. Uh, if you keep them, you know, uh, closed, some people say upside down, uh, but if you keep them closed, you generally can keep them moist forever. I mean, just for a really long time. So now I have that stamp. So I am going to stamp down. See how fine that stamp is trimmed around the edge? So I don't have to worry about any excess whatsoever. Okay, now I'm going to stamp my valance, I'm going to call it, on here. So I have here some black detail embossing, and it's 
a lot finer than your regular embossing powders. And um, it will move around, so sometimes I might just pick it up like this and make sure it's not blowing all over the place. So I'm going to cover this whole image with this black fine, and don't worry about how much you put on there because you're using one color, you're just going to tap it right back into the container. Now if you do use more than one color, just remember not to put it back into the same container because you'll contaminate your colors and you know might not enjoy them as much anymore. I finished with my other element which was my valance and now I am going to put my card together. So first what I've done is I've gotten my card. I cut a piece of paper the size of my card. In this instance it's five by six and a half, I believe. Anyway, I'm going to uh, put some adhesive. Now, I've tried all kinds of adhesives, but i got to tell you guys, these rollers are the best. They're absolutely, positively easy, and once I've learned to not be so wasteful, <laughs> as in like covering every inch of every line with strips and strips of tape, these last a good while, so... Now, um, I've taken my paper and I put an Eiffel Tower there with another small stamp just to give it like a something in the distance kind of look, okay? So, I'm going to put my card front on, get that down good, and the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to use a piece of acetate or you can use transparency paper or whatever you choose to use and I am going to just put that over the top of here. So I'm going to use in this instance a line. Okay and I'm going to clean that transparency off and I'm just going to put it right across the top of there. Just like that. Okay. Put that on there good. So now I'm working with this with a piece of transparency on top. My next move is I am going to put my valance on. Now the, re the way I'm going to do this is I am actually going to add some dots to this. Oh. Uh, you might notice that this paper is a little darker on the back. Okay, that's from the embossing, and that's when you use this. Generally, if the paper's thin, it does come all the way through, but if you're not using the back of the paper, it doesn't really matter, right? Okay, so I'm just going to put three of these things, well, maybe four, just to make sure it stays down. I'll put another one in the middle. And you can, cut, you know, you can use these things to make as much height as you want. The little pop dots, I absolutely love them. They give lift and dimension to your art. So you just peel those little backs off of there. Okay. Then these things are really nice and sticky. Okay. So now I'm going to add this to the top of the card. So see, that's why that strip of tape didn't really matter. Okay, so I'm adding that to the top of the card. I'm going to cut off the excess of my valance. We don't want it to be hanging too far over the card. Cut it off on both sides. Okay, so now I have my nice little backing. Now I'm going to take my little caged birdie and I am going to put just a tad of adhesive on his back. Now if you're going to give these cards away or something, you know you know what to work with. Use a good amount of adhesive. You don't want your work coming apart in somebody's hands. <laughs> that wouldn't be very nice. Okay, and I'm just going to put the top part of this now you could also like maybe put a brad or something like that if you want I am going to stick it up under there like that and stick that down so 
you've heard the saying, laughter is the best medicine. I believe art is the best medicine along with laughter. So laugh at yourself. Create some fun silliness, something that you enjoy that makes you smile. Surround yourself with art. Put art up in your rooms and, and in your car and whatever you have to do to keep that color momentum going. And remember, everything you do is good energy when you put your passion and love into it. I'm going to take my kaleidoscope pad with all the different colors, make sure I push it together. And because it has a slip on it, I actually need to bring this to the edge of the table to make sure I get that whole pad on there. So I'm going to do it like that. And the other thing you could do is lay the transparency on top of the pad. So you just want to get it down, get, get it color rich, I like to say, which is as much color as you want on it. Okay, isn't that pretty? Then I'm going to pop that back open. That way the colors can stay clearer for a longer time. Most of my colors are already destroyed, and, uh, but I've had them for, you would be amazed at how long I've had some of my supplies. Now I'm going to give it a little dose of water. Then I am going to take my photo paper and I'm just going to flip it over. The difference is it's hard to slide photo paper around so I wouldn't. I let the colors just blend right into it. Photo paper has chemicals, so it doesn't react the same as regular paper or cardstock or anything. So I'm going to lift that up. Look how vibrant and pretty that is. Okay. And I'm going to let that dry, and it will dry flat. Just cutting off any excess water I see. So how pretty is that and vibrant? Same process, different papers. Okay? Again, clean. And if you have a lot of ink on here, you could actually just reuse it. I like to wipe mine every time. With the regular paper, you generally have to be set in a puddle of it or move it around to make all those colors kind of work together when you're doing that process. Remember to always work in a well-ventilated area. This card, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of the paper that I colored the background using my dye ink pad and my transparency technique. Then I am going to use a stamp on top of it, and I've chosen this beautiful butterfly. You really could use anything you want to. I'm actually going to emboss the butterfly on... So rather than inking on with colored ink, I'm just going to use my embossing ink on here. And remember, if you get it too heavy, in some spots the images will come out murky. With these things, you can generally just roll across it and kind of pick up the excess. So hopefully that will work this time. And I'm simply going to put it on there and press it in. Make sure I got the whole thing inked. Okay. Then I am going to spread on some green embossing powder because I've chosen to use green for this butterfly. I thought it would blend in really well with the background uh, colors uh, of the background paper that I made. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now I am going to emboss that and go on to the next step. And here I have the butterfly that I have stamped and then embossed and cut out. Can you see that where it's been embossed? Isn't that gorgeous? 
Okay, now what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take my adhesive, my Mod Podge, and I'm just going to fill in the parts that aren't embossed to give it some texture. And the reason why I'm not doing the whole thing is because I want it to be just a little more flexible than that. So here is the butterfly all glazed up. See that? Isn't that pretty? So we embossed them around the edge as you can see. And then I just filled in the other spots with my glaze. And in this instance, I used the Mod Podge. And it's just a beautiful way to capture a piece of art and add it to your own art. So that's what we're going to do. Here, I stamped the image and filled it in with the glossy adhesive. Cut it out, attached it to a card that I simply backed with a text stamp and topped with a smaller stamp. How pretty is that? By the way, the page is covered with glimmer mist and dye inks. Here, I used a stamp that has four card elements, cut two of them out, covered them with the diamond glaze on the top after I colored them in with markers and my Copic markers and attach them, cut them out, attach them to this cute card that I also used dye inks to color the backs. And also I wanted to give you a lifted view of what that looks like so you can see the dimension. <music> that art is a personal thing and I truly believe that. I've gotten a lot of letters and comments from people who are afraid, they're afraid of what other people might think, uh, things like that. Be true to yourself and put your passion and your desires in it. No art looks exactly alike unless it's a forgery. Everybody's unique and that's what makes art unique. So just do your thing, have fun, and if you love it, we'll love it. Let's talk embossing metal. So here I have a piece of metal that I've cut out, colored piece of metal. Um, tips. When you first cut this out, it's going to be extremely sharp around the edges. These and other sanders come in handy really well for just tri edging off these uh, edges and making them smooth so you don't cut your hand. Another thing you could do is wear gloves. I don't. It's not comfortable for me, but you might find it helpful when you're working with metal because it is sharp. Okay? So, just as you would emboss with paper, you're going to emboss with this metal. So, same thing. Get it down. Now, here's a couple of tips. First of all, when you get your metal down, um, I like to use painter's tape to hold it in place because if, you, if it starts sliding around too much, it can ruin your pattern. So I'm going to hold that right there, okay, like that. So I'm just going to take my embossing tool, and I'm going to start with a bigger one, I think. I'm going to take my embossing tool. Actually, first of all, run your finger over it like this. Look at that. So you can get a clear impression. Now, why does this help? It helps in a couple of ways. One, obviously you want to see where you're working in case you don't want to mess up any other area on your metal. Two, and always cut a bigger piece of metal because like I said, it is a sharp thing to work with. I always want a piece where I can at least put my hand down like that. Um, and then you want to just take your tool and start going over. Now, the other thing is, if I could, I could, I could go across just like this. 
I said I could three times, didn't I? I think I was convincing myself. So look, you could go across like this. Or, because you've rubbed in an impression, you can actually see it. You can just go down in there where your impression is. So, that's, and then you can get smaller ones if, you know, whatever works for you in your spots. Now, another thing I've discovered. So, let me take this off and show that to you. Okay. Another thing I've discovered is if you just go straight across it like I showed you, like back and forth with the tool, you're going to get what looks like scratch marks. And I hope you can see that. Um, you'll get, you're going to get what looks like scratch marks. So to get those out, I've discovered that if I take an uh, embossing tool with a smaller head, I can simply go in those spots and smooth them out and smooth out those lines. You can use a bigger tool if you have a bigger area and smooth out those lines. So, that's how simple it is. Another tip, you could take a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper and look at that. You can do jewelry and I'll show you a couple of pictures. Uh, you could do all kinds of stuff with this. It's just great for um, there's different kinds of tools that you can find sometimes at specialty stores or maybe uh, engraving stores. I'm not sure, you know, craft stores. Um, but there's so there's like a wheel and and don't worry about me in this uh, metal. I have a million pieces of it. <laughs> I know some artists go, oh my God, you're going to waste that. So you can. There's all kinds of things you, all kinds of tools out there for you to use from the tiniest embosser. Okay, so that's one thing. Now I did that with this template. Um, you can really use any template. You can also use these templates that you can get at most stores that carry craft supplies. So these are uh, fun for you, when you're making cards. You can make textures. And look at there. There's a spider web. Um, so there's all kinds of things you could do with this for embossing. And that's embossing. Briefly, let's talk embossing folders. You know, the folders you get, you buy them in the store like this. So easy. One, two, three. Your paper inside your folder, on your block, your mat on top. Put it through and turn. Look at that. Okay. So for this card, I covered the whole card with Glimmer Mist, and I used the pineapple color. I trimmed the card with an uh, orangish colored ink pad or ink color. Um, this is the background paper that I made using the Kaleidoscope ink pad. It's autumn leaves. And then these pieces I made by stamping, coloring in, and cutting. And then I topped them with the Mod Podge Dimensional Adhesive. Dimensional Magic. And simply put a strip of this background paper across my top piece, which is also colored with ink pads that I did my little ink thing where I dipped the paper in the colors on the transparency. And then, um, so that's that piece. Fun, huh? Okay. This one, I simply took that butterfly that I embossed and then filled in the unembossed parts with the glaze, the dimensional adhesive, hmm, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, just a stamp I stamped across after I covered the background with a text 
stamp and you know one tech stamp goes a long long way so this is a big one this is a, a big piece and I use this to get little parts of text as I did on this card see that and what I did was I just laid a piece of paper towel on top of this flower and then I just kind of made myself an outline cut that out laid it on top so that only the flower was covered and then inked around it and that's how I got that effect and this is a paper that I colored and embossed in the background and then with the white paper all I did was take my stamp and uh, stamp in various places my text stamp and there you go with the embossed flower isn't that great and then ooh I love this one so this is embossed cut out attached there's that transparency the birdcage stamp that's on another piece of paper in the background I have sky but you can make your own just by having blue paper and making some white clouds on it or or you can do anything the whole purpose was to show you layering with embossing and using other techniques just to turn something into something completely different these are transparent stickers leaves that I put on top of that paper, that blueprint paper, to give it a different look. How much fun was that? Okay, so you've heard the saying, laughter is the best medicine. I believe art is the best medicine along with laughter. So laugh at yourself. Create some fun silliness, something that you enjoy that makes you smile. Surround yourself with art. Put art up in your rooms and, and in your car and whatever you have to do to keep that color momentum going. And remember, everything you do is good energy when you put your passion and love into it. If you'd like more information about Living in Color with Steph Jordan, contact me at deviosity at deviosity.com. That's D-I-V-I-A-C-I-T-Y at DVOCity.com. Also look for me on Blog Talk Radio. My show, Living in Color with Steph Jordan, features artists from all over the world in all mediums, from music and cooking to dancing and silliness and art, you name it. We're out there, and our job is to support each other as artists to keep it alive. Love you.